Today we're gonna to talk about pans. I'm gonna tell you what my favorite pans are. I'm gonna tell you which pans you should be using and which ones you shouldn't be using and why. And if you have any of these pans in your kitchen and you're using them to cook with, you are going to want to rethink your pan selection. Now, my first pan, my first choice, and this stays on our cooktop at all times, is a good old cast iron. So if you have a good old cast iron pan, you can hang on to it, but there's some things that you should be very aware of when you're using cast iron. And, oh, oh and she's heavy. Yeah, we don't even put it back in the cabinet because it gets used all the time, every day for multiple meals. But I have to watch how I use that. So hang tight for that one. The next one that I have is ceramic. And you can see, you know, you kind of see what's going on there. Now, supposedly ceramic was a little healthier, I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into each one of these in a second. This is just your general nonstick pan. Now, I haven't used this in years, but it's in my cabinet and I'm like, why don't I throw this away? That gives you some insight as to what this is going to, what we're gonna do with this guy, okay? So that's your general nonstick pan. And then good old stainless steel, okay? So nice uh, heat conducting bottom and that's our good old stainless steel. So that's a great, um, this is a great pan too. So my two favorites, my favorite is the cast iron. My second favorite is this one. And then the other two we need to talk about getting rid of. So these other two, you hear me talk about the PFAS, the forever chemicals. Non-stick cookware is one of the biggest places that we find forever chemicals in our homes. And this is, when you cook on here, you're actually getting this these forever chemicals to leach into your food and then you're eating it. So not only is the exposure to these forever chemicals high in the environment itself, but you're actually poisoning your family by using these. Now, I don't know why I, I kept this. I think I it's a nice big pan, so maybe I kept it because I thought, oh, maybe if I need a large pan, but it's time to clean out the cabinet. And this is a really great opportunity to just get rid of this. And you can also see how, you know, I know all of your pans look like this. It's scratched from the fork or the spoon or whatever you've used. And of course the problem there is now you get the flakes of all of those chemicals into your food. So if you have nonstick cookware, this is guaranteed PFAS, guaranteed forever chemicals that are damaging your health, your kids' health, your family's health. And if you suffer from anything that is hormonal related, brain, anxiety, depression, brain fog, digestive issues, if you have thyroid issues, if you have any kind of reproductive issues whatsoever, even infertility has been linked to forever chemicals. This has got to go in the garbage. I know it's really nice to cook an egg in, but it's got to go. It needs to have a home that is not here. And I'll, I'll put that in the recycle bin. I don't know if they'll recycle it, so we'll see. I'm sure there's like, you know, the guys who come by and they, and they want to, you know, take all the scrap. There's probably some good scrap in there. Okay, next one is ceramic. The problem with ceramic, it's just a different kind of PFAS. So they make you believe that this is safer. But again, the problem is then you get your, your fork in here, you start to scratch it, and it also will leach these forever chemicals into your food. So this guy's going away too. I just, I don't use it. I, I don't like the chemicals. I don't like my food in the chemicals. And honestly, I can cook a sunny side up egg way better in my cast iron skillet. The, even though the cast iron does not have a nonstick coating, you put some butter in there and put an egg in there and it will cook amazing. In fact, I have a little smaller pan that I use to cook um, eggs with and it, it cooks up beautifully. So again, forever chemicals, any health issues in the family, get rid of it, toss it out. So let's talk about the cast iron real quick and then we'll go to the stainless steel. So I, I love this. You know, a lot of people... Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people have altered iron levels in their blood. Let's just talk about how this cooks first and then we'll talk about what it does for your blood. But 
it cooks beautifully. It literally is a, you put some, you know, I put, I cook a lot with um, lard and I cook a lot with butter. And so I put that in here and it creates a beautiful nonstick surface naturally. And then of course you're getting the flavor, you know, it's a really well seasoned pan and that goes into the food. Well, here's the problem. It is cast iron. And so if you are a female and you are menstruating, you are probably not going to feel the effects of having the iron. But if you're post-menopausal, non-menstruating, and a man, you don't bleed regularly. And so that is, you're going to actually absorb more of the iron from this pan. The problem with that is the only way to get rid of excess iron is to actually go get, um, not necessarily even donate blood because it'll be too too high. So you have to find somebody who will uh, literally phlebotomize you, right? So they will draw the blood and then the blood gets discarded. So if you are high in iron, and I've had a handful of patients over the years who come in and their iron levels are off the charts. And so I will ask, are you cooking with, with cast iron. I will, and then, and then we also have to be concerned about another issue called hemochromatosis, which is a genetic blood disorder where there's too much iron that accumulates in the blood. So you could be really sick if you have cast iron and you have hemochromatosis, and yet traditional medicine has not figured out why you're really sick. And this is actually more common in men but then again, once women stop menstruating is when that can actually get uncovered. So it can actually be, if, you, if your iron levels are, are so off on a regular blood panel, you probably wanna press your doctor to test you for hemochromatosis so that you can start to learn how to manage it. And again, manage it is really what you need to do. Start to get rid of utilizing cast iron and then um, go actually have your blood drawn and reduce the amount of iron that's in the blood that way. It's the only way to do it. So I love my cast iron, but I have to cook less with it because yes, I am of an age that um, I no longer menstruate. Okay, so we'll just put it out there. And uh, I know I look super young, but <laughs> so... But, and it bums me out because I love my cast iron skillet. Now I'll probably still cook my eggs in there because my I can cook an egg way better than I can in here. Now, the stainless steel pan still cooks amazing. Doesn't quite have the nonstick ability of the cast iron when I put butter or lard in there, but um, still cooks amazing. So I'll do like pan fried chicken or walleye. Um, and I just, you know, and, oh, coconut oil. I'll cook with coconut oil too. Love coconut oil. So all those are really good high temperature fats. So if you're going to pan sear, or pan fry anything, you can actually put it on a higher flame and you won't convert those oils into something that's gonna be more dangerous and bad for your health. If you are trying to cook, let's say you're trying to cook fish, uh, it, you know, pan fry fish and you're using olive oil, you're going to convert that olive oil into a trans fat. You're going to convert that olive oil and cause it cause its rancidity so that it becomes more, um, it becomes more damaging to your health. You've taken away the health properties of the olive oil. So I really suggest you do not cook with olive oil, that you really, if you're, you know, use olive oil as a finishing oil and really just use your, your you could use your lard, you can use beef fat, you can use butter, you can use coconut oil. Um, those are the, the best types of oils or fats that I recommend cooking with. And then again, if you are a man, uh, if you are a non-menstruating woman, you want to use this. Doesn't mean you can't ever use your cast iron, but I used it daily for years. And so I, I want to be really mindful. Now my iron levels are currently fine, but what would that do for me in the future if I keep up with that? So it's just being mindful of these are some of the dangers. If I continue to use it, I don't want to wait until it causes me harm before I be mindful of that. And I and I start to um, use another source. So I'm gonna be toggling between the cast iron and this one. This I'll probably use about 75, 80% of the time now, and then I'll use the cast iron at other times. Um, my daughter loves the cast iron. She uses it for everything, but she's 18, so she can actually do that safely. I know that this these can be really expensive. However, I have actually seen really nice cast iron cookware at Salvation Army. So I would encourage you, go check it out. I need. I have two really nice ones. 
Um, I may or may not go get one more, but you know, I have enough right now that serves me. But every time I go into a Salvation Army or a resale shop, um, or, you know, um, some kind of an antique store, I will look for stainless steel cookware. And, you know, you can just buy one or two pieces depending on the pricing on it. So anyway, check your cookware, get rid of anything that is ceramic, even the, the, um, the, those, those green ones, like anything that has a coating on it, that is all that is, you know, any kind of Teflon, any of those chemicals, those are forever chemicals. They're going into your food, they're going into you, and they're causing damage to your health. And maybe you don't feel it today, but you will feel it later. And why not take action now before it becomes a problem? All right, so let me know what you're doing with your cookware. Let me know what kind of cookware you have. May, leave me a comment. And I wanna hear about what your thoughts are on cast iron, stainless steel, and your ceramics. And if you have to go ditch everything, what did you do? Go check out the Salvation Army or another resale shop and see what you find, all right? I hope that was helpful. And as always, I appreciate you being here and I will see you on the next one.